Hello and welcome to the Successful Garden Design Show. As you probably guessed, I'm no longer in southern Spain. I'm back in the UK and barely noticing the difference in temperature. Anyway, today's show is all about front gardens or front yards for our American viewers. I'm going to show you some lots of ideas that will hopefully inspire you to completely transform your front garden. If you're frustrated your garden doesn't look as beautiful as it could, even though you've purchased lots of lovely plants, then help is at hand. Plants are not enough. You have to have a good design layout. And when you combine design with the beauty of plants, that's when the magic really happens. It's our mission here at Successful Garden Design to show you how to do it. And it's much easier than you may think. I'm Rachel Matthews and I've been a professional international garden designer for over 25 years and I teach garden design online. Now this week's episode has come about thanks to Roger. A few weeks back he asked me to focus on front yards and entrances so that's what we're going to do today. Now I divide front gardens into two different types. There's the purely decorative ones that frame the front of the house and then there's the more functional front garden that needs to incorporate a drive and other practical considerations like a garage and perhaps a bin storage area. When it comes to designing a front garden I have some golden rules and my first one is, and this applies particularly to gardens where you need to incorporate a drive, is first and foremost you must view it as a garden. So if you didn't have to incorporate the drive or any practical solution what is it that you how would you design that garden then once I've made it all pretty I then go back and rework it to put in the practical solution of the drive or bin area etc and doing it this way around enables you to create much more creative and interesting gardens for the front so I'll now show you exactly what I mean with a selection of front gardens that I've done and also so I've been a little bit cheeky and I've gone around filming some gardens that I've come across. So this is probably about the most unexciting front garden you could ever wish to inherit. Just tarmac and, you know, there's no place to put plants. And actually you can't even tell which one's the front door. Your eye is drawn towards the green one, but that isn't the front at all. So this one was really confusing for visitors. So what we did, we got rid of that awful tarmac and put down quite a nice block paver, but also separated the area off with the trellis work. And you'll notice over to the right, there's a big curve, a circle of gravel. Now that's an additional car parking space so we cut down on the cost of the build it wasn't all um, brick pavers but also that's going to have plants in it so it's going to look quite pretty as well and then if we look through the trellis area then suddenly because we've angled it you can see exactly where the front door is so there's no confusion and then the planting over time especially when the climbers come up will help soften this area and make it much much prettier now this one, bit of a building site on this um, conversion. Now they were putting quite a modern frontage to it and there was quite a difference in levels by the time it had finished. And now what we've done with the steps is making them come all the way across really helps link the front of the house with the rest of the garden. And as you can see, this is what their view was before we'd landscape. So just a drive running down the side and then the view of the sea beyond. So then by putting this deck in at the same level as the house and then in the plants in the round border there that just tied in the house with the garden all the modern landscaping with the surrounding area and then at the front of it there's additional car parking space again this gravel area was going to have lots of ground cover like alcamilla mollis and times and things that could take the occasional drive over just to soften that landscaping but your front garden doesn't have to be fancy. Now, this is quite a typical one that's got a bit overgrown and the lawn has ended up being a bit of an odd shape every time they've edged it. So this one was a very simple makeover. What we did was to incorporate a very simple shape that works well with the house. And you'll notice that it's almost the same shape as the trellis at the end of the garden there. So it all kind of tied in and it's, you know, nothing incredibly fancy. It's just neat and tidy, but that having that one dominant shape really brings that to front garden together and this is the view from the other end as you can see it was pretty dismal with the weird shape of lawn and they're just pushing it out the other way with that curve suddenly makes the area look so much bigger and taking out the old shrubs and putting in the new ones now it's a little bit stark at the moment but as soon as those plants grow back up it'll look really good and be very low maintenance for the owners 
So this is another front garden that's got a little bit old and tired and the lawn was sunken down which was causing problems. So what we did was we raised up the lawn area and actually made the gravel drive a little bit wider so they could get more cars on. Now the keen-eyed amongst you might notice the gates opposite have a curved dip in the middle so we borrowed that shape and we used it for the shape of the lawn and also for that little bite out of the lawn with the cobbles there which eventually was going to have either a sculpture or an armillary sundial on it. So very, very simple design again, similar shape to the last garden, sort of an eye shaped with the, the grass, can make a world of difference. Now this one, a little bit of a building site, and um, what they wanted was a Mediterranean sort of style garden. So we used terracotta colored paving, and also um, to make it more of a garden, we made these interesting paths. So the, the route to the front door wasn't boring, and also they wanted additional parking so you'll notice the times in the front here there so that this area could be driven on and an extra car put in when necessary now they did put a pot on which can be moved when they need an additional car but as you can see it's much more of a garden uh, than it is a driveway and this Mediterranean style planting with the big gravel and the terracotta paving really lends itself well and over the years it's grown up then the big formium it stops people looking in the lounge window there, but it's far enough back from the window to allow the light in. And this is our final driveway one. As you can see, it's got a bit run down. It's an old concrete one with a, a stepping stone path. So again, this was more of a makeover. We sort of just tidied everything up by getting um, a defined lawn shape and path in and redoing the steps in bricks that matched the house. And then a nice clay paver for the driveway just made this much more cottage garden looking and just tidied everything up. Now this front garden definitely too small for a drive and you might be wondering what on earth can you do with something this small? Well this was actually my very first house front garden and I was desperate to grow vegetables because the back garden was too shady and I wanted herbs and as many veg as possible but again I also wanted it pretty. So I put some big tubs by the front door. Now the climbing frame of the obelisk was covered with runner beans and then you can see in the two troughs next to it there were onions and carrots and lettuce and then all the other plants except for the formium were herbs and then I had a lovely grapevine covering the front of the house. Now this front garden was done for low maintenance but as you can see it's a bit disjointed with the spattering of plants and gravel and also that diagonal to the front door really cuts down on the visual size of the garden. So we re-landscaped it with a lot of paving because again the owner wanted it to be low maintenance and we put lots of cobbles down on a weed suppressant membrane. Now it does look very stark at the moment but as soon as everything grows up that will be much softer and also he didn't want an entire fence around it but he did want to delineate his property. So by putting this wire framed fence around it just made it clear which was his without dominating the space and making it look ridiculous. Now for our next section, I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky and show you some gardens that I've secretly filmed while I've been out and about. Now this first one I really love. It's a very simple design. Now it was filmed at the beginning of February, so admittedly we're not looking at its best, but even so, they've got a very simple circle of gravel for parking the cars, which is framed by this uh, natural stone paver path, which just flows out from the main circle. Now I would guess that this garden's probably only about 18 months old, but even so I can see the potential. They've got some lovely large um, coppiced birch trees. Now they are very, very good for absorbing all the environmental pollution because this property was next to a very busy road. And they've also got a yew hedge that they put in, which again will help with the noise reduction and pollution. So let's have a look at a couple more examples of front gardens that I've come across on my travels. Now, obviously this isn't the best time of year to be viewing a garden, but even so, the underlying design principles are what I want you to take a look at, rather than the fact the planting isn't looking good this time of year. Now, something I see all the time is people putting a focal point of some description 
right bang smack in the middle of their lawn or sometimes it'll be just in a gravel border. Now we'll cover this more in future episodes but when you're placing focal points or anything in the garden you really need to do it in a way that ties in with everything else. So for example it has to have a reason for being. Now this central piece here because nothing else in the garden is circular it doesn't really work it's just there in the middle and it would have probably looked a lot better had they had it in the middle of a large circle of gravel so that that circular feature made sense it, it sort of worked with everything else and also this one I can see why they've done it they basically ripped up the lawn to make a mo low maintenance garden but because they haven't put in a main design shape it's looking a little bit stark and the central piece doesn't really work had they put some planting around it just to soften it and got a main design shape in then it would have linked together much better so I hope that's given you some pointers for your garden and I also hope that I haven't badly upset the people whose gardens that I've sneakily filmed whilst I've been out and about if you'd like to learn all the tips and tricks to how to transform your garden, no matter what size, shape or style, or front gardens or back gardens, do check out the main garden design course that I teach here at Successful Garden Design. Now, the Great Garden Formula covers all aspects of design in great detail, so if you're really keen to learn exactly what to do to transform your garden, this is a great course. There's five main modules that walk you through the entire design process, and I share with you my formula that I've developed over over the years to make garden designing so much easier and it also comes with the survey course and the plant expert so you'll be able to know exactly which plants will grow in your garden just by looking at the leaves but also there's lots of video tutorials that walk you through every aspect of designing and as the course is 100% online you can access the material as and when it suits you and also on the move as it's all iPad and tablet compatible. And there's also some extras, there was my um, interview with the award winning garden designer and author David Stevens and also you can download a sample to get a feel and see if it will be the right course for you. So do take a look at that as it will save you a lot of money getting things right first time. Okay, on to our next segment. Did you get the answer to last episode's question? Okay, so the question I asked in the last episode was why didn't I line this wall here up with this main one at the back? Well, the answer I was looking for was to create a sense of movement. Now, whilst I wasn't expecting anyone to use that exact term, if you said it made it more interesting or it made the area feel longer, then you're on the right lines. That You're right, that's what I was looking for. If we'd have carried it right the way along, it would have been a static line across the garden and yes that's about as exciting as it sounds your fence is a static line so by putting this and it only juts back a tiny bit it just gives a sense of movement because that is longer than this area and therefore your eye sees it as further away so it makes the area look longer and it makes it look more interesting now I was so impressed with the number of right answers and the way that everyone answered it. You know, really, really good stuff. Um, and whilst no one did actually use the term movement, you really did understand exactly what I was trying to do. So well done to everybody that um, left their answers. So it did actually leave me wondering, do you even need a garden design show? Of course, because you all seem to have a really good grasp of exactly why things work in the garden. So once again, well done. And I will be drawing a winner today for the person that's won the deck design course so thank you very much for all your answers and if you'd like some more top tips on how to add the wow factor to your garden i've created a cheat sheet that you can download and a short video tutorial that walks you through the top five things that you must do if you want to create a stunning garden so head on over to successfulgardendesign.com forward slash wow and you can download your cheat sheet there so I hope you found this episode useful and it's given you plenty of ideas for your front garden. And in future episodes, we're going to look at some of the things you've asked for, which is larger gardens, how to place focal points around the garden and retaining walls and many others. So do keep your ideas flowing in and do please leave a review on iTunes. It really helps get the message out there about how important design is. So I look forward to seeing you in the next show. Great, this is noisier than Spain. So I hope you found this episode full of cockerels. So I hope you've...
I might as well fly back to Spain. It's quieter. 